Hello, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. In today's Tracy's Top 5, I'll be going over my top five tips for cultivating self-love. So stay tuned to learn more. On today's Tracy's Top 5, we're going to discuss my favorite top five ways to cultivate more self-love. So let's just dive in a little bit on the word cultivate. When you are cultivating, you're usually like preparing the land and using the land to plant a seed and to let it grow. So as you do these top five tips that I'm about to give you, you're actually kind of just cultivating um, that space inside of yourself to actually then let self-love begin to bloom more and more. So if you just follow any of these tips at all, just remember that these are going to help you over time and with practice, kind of like planting a seed. You do not get to eat the fruit the same day that you plant the seed. So give yourself enough self-love to be patient, to let your garden flourish. All right, so let's start with our number one for today's Tracy's Top 5 um, Tips to Cultivate More Self-Love. So tip number one is to let your words match your true thoughts. So my tip number one for today to cultivate more self-love is to let your words match your truest thoughts and feelings. The reason that this is my number one for today is because so many people in this day and age care so much about what other people think of them, what other people are doing. Um, and therefore, I think that a lot of people aren't staying, standing firm in who they are when using words. And if you've seen some of my other videos, then you're beginning to understand the power of your words. Every word that you speak is actually kind of like a magic spell that you're placing into the universe. And then um, it's actually, you know, it's drawing and attracting things to you based on the intention behind your word, as well as the energies that you're creating with other people as you communicate. So the best way to cultivate the most self-love would be to be completely honest with yourself and others. So as you speak, be sure that your words are matching your truest beliefs. And as well, you want to make sure that you're using your words for good and not for evil upon others. So um, obviously, you're going to feel better about yourself the more impeccable you are with your word. So just day by day, learn to become more observant in the words that you're using. And if you catch yourself falling into the trap of trying to say something that doesn't quite resonate with you just to please someone else, then maybe it's time to start looking for those moments and stopping yourself. And then maybe either thinking of something new to say or just don't say it at all. Because remember, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> so, um, a I guess another tip for this tip number one would be not only to become an observer of the words that you're using with others, um, but you also want to make sure if I say this, is it the right thing to do? Is it going to make me feel good? And another question you should probably ask yourself is, is it going to matter in five minutes from now if I say what I say? Um so if you can answer all those questions with integrity and know that what you're about to say is actually adding value to the lives of others, then go ahead and speak your truth. 
If what you're about to say isn't quite resonating with your absolute truth, then it's probably best not to say anything at all. (laughs) So let's move on to tip number two to cultivate more self-love. All right, so tip number two in cultivating more self-love is to learn to let things go. Any emotional baggage that you are carrying around is doing nothing to benefit you. It is only weighing down your heart. So here's a saying that I saw once in a bathroom, in a public bathroom at a coffee shop that someone wrote on the bathroom wall. And what they wrote said, angels can fly because they take themselves so lightly. And I really loved that little quote that I saw written on the bathroom wall that day because I remembered it all this time only because it made sense to me at the time when I read it. And it's true because you are literally making your aura and your energy feel just so heavy and full of gunk when you carry around all this emotional debris that you do not need anymore. So if there's something that you need to let go then it's time to just learn to let it go. If it is not serving your highest good, then there's no reason to keep something in your heart or in your mind or in your life. This also goes for your things, excuse me, your physical things. So if you're beginning to, you know, accumulate way too much stuff over the years, You're going to feel so much better and so much lighter if you just let go of some things that you are no longer using in your day-to-day life. Um, For me, I know that my husband and I, each year, we try to go through and get rid of as much as, you know, the clothes that don't fit our kids anymore, toys that they no longer use, home decorations that we aren't using anymore. We just like to get rid of those kind of things because if we let it accumulate and build up over time, there's not going to be any more space in our house, uh, you know, after so many years have passed to actually enjoy the things that we love about being home at our house. The same is true for your mind and your heart. If you're too busy hoarding these emotions that you no longer need and are no longer serving you, then you're not going to be able to experience life fully. So tip number two to cultivate more self-love is to learn to let things go mentally, emotionally, as well as physically. So now let's move on to tip number three. Tracy's top five tip number three to cultivate more self-love. So your tip number three today is to make time for your own self-development. I know that this sounds a little strange that you have to actually make time to develop who you are, but it is so true, especially in this day and age where um, the internet gives us endless amounts of information anytime we want, right there at our fingertips. Um, But not only that, but we're always on the go. It's almost as if People are trying to fill their hours as much as possible. And then anytime they're not doing something actively, people then just are sedentary and they sit on the couch and watch TV in more of a vegetative state. Um, So really, people are not taking time for self-development the way that they should in general. I know that there are many people out there who do take time also for self-development. So this is definitely something... um, This tip is so important. It's the most important tip. So whether your self-development would include meditation and prayer or journaling, or maybe it would include some type of exercise, like a yoga practice, no matter what it is, you should take at least some time every single day for your own self-development. With the, like I said, in this information age, with everything coming at us all the time, sometimes we just forget to slow down, 
set the, you know, electronic devices aside and just make time for you, for your own soul growth and development. Um, so some of the ways that I like to do that, I have already listed. I like to um, either meditate. I like to take some time and do some journaling to let my thoughts out, clear my mind and kind of help cleanse my emotions. Um, sometimes I like to give myself Reiki. So um, that's kind of a very relaxing time for me. It's, you know, all of these things that I do, sometimes, I mean, pretty much anything that I do for my own self-development each day is only about 20 minutes. Every single person out there has at least 20 minutes that they could give to themselves. And if you really don't think that you have 20 minutes, then you should make yourself at least take 15 or 10. <laughs> Do whatever you can, even if you only have to start small until you get used to giving yourself some more time each day. As you give yourself the time and space to grow and develop as a soul, you begin to understand more about who you are. And of course, that will cultivate more self-love because you begin to understand yourself on a much deeper level. So now let's move on to the tip number four. All right, so tip number four to cultivate more self-love is to love others just as they are. This might sound strange, like how is loving others just as they are going to help me in any way? Um, but the reason is because the more that you learn to literally just love people for who they are, whether or not you agree with them is besides the point, just love them just because they are. And the more that you practice doing that, believe it or not, the more you actually begin to love yourself just as you are. And the reason is because you begin to see that all of us are human. We all make mistakes. We say the wrong things. We do the wrong things. We, um, you know, we aren't always on the track that we should be on as humans. We make mistakes all the time. So if you learn to begin to look at others with just a universal love and just begin to love other people just as they are, the more that you can practice that, the more it's going to extend into your own self-love. You will begin to love yourself more, you know, no matter how imperfect you are, because you'll understand that you are who and what you are just because that is who you are. Um, so each person sees the world differently. We all have a different filter to view the world from. Um, so really, you, I mean, it makes no sense to judge others for the way that they see the world. Um, so anyway, no matter what, just love people just as they are. And then you, over time, will begin to love yourself just as you are. Now let's move on to the last and final tip for cultivating more self-love. All right, you guys. So tip number five to cultivate more self-love is to stop taking things personally. This ties into every single other tip um, because if you stop taking things personally, it'll be easier to learn to let things go. If you stop taking everything personally, then it'll be easier to love everyone just as they are. Um, if you stop taking th everything personally, then it'll be easier to say what is on your mind with the most honesty. Um, and also, well, I guess for the other one, taking some time for yourself if you learn to let go of some things that just, or if you don't take personally when, you know, the fact that you need to have some time for self-development, then it'll be easier to give yourself that time. So no matter what, 
you know, people are not always nice to each other. People aren't always going to say and do the things that you expect them to say or do. So the best advice in any situation is just not to take things personally. So no matter what someone says to you, even if they say something out of anger to you or someone else about you, that doesn't really say anything about who you are. It always says so much more about who that person is. So honestly, if someone is so distraught that they have to lash out at you or lash out about you to someone else, you almost should kind of feel sorry for them because that means that they're living in their own personal hell. Um, and if, you know, if you just don't take it personally, then you kind of understand, well, they had to be pretty miserable to say that or to do that or whatever it is that might have hurt you. So this tip number five, not to take things personally, it doesn't mean that um, you just let people walk all over you either. Same with number four, where I said to love everyone just as they are. Just because you love someone just as they are does not mean that you have to have them in your life. It just means it makes it easier to not take what they say and do personally. So just remember, anything that anyone does to try to hurt you or says to try to hurt you is a product of their own inner hell. It is not a reflection of who you are. It is not a reflection of a circumstance that has anything to do with you. Every single person is living in their own world. And if there's a problem with you in their world, then I think that problem is in their world and not yours. As long as you're following all these other steps, then you have nothing to worry about when it comes to not taking things personally. Because the more that you give yourself time to develop yourself, the more you begin to realize that your world's different than their world. So just don't take it personally if it comes from their world. Does that make sense? I hope so. Well, I really want you guys to comment down below and let me know what you think of my five tips for cultivating self-love. And if you have any tips for any other viewers, please feel free to share your own tips for cultivating self-love down in the comment section below. And of course, I always would love if you guys would click subscribe. It makes my heart so happy. Um, so if you're just a viewer and haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time that I upload a new video, you would just click that notifications bell and the notification will come straight to your device. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this video helps you to cultivate more self-love in your life. See you guys next time. Bye.